Amen. How many of you are glad that you've come to church so far? Amen. God is good. He is good. And all the time, He is good. You know, we had a good week this week. We, Like I said earlier, we went out for National Night Out. And I uh, just want to thank all the youth group. Man, they're doing awesome. Those guys are amazing. And many of them came out and just lended a hand. And it was cool to sit back and just watch you all. You all, I mean, I had, man, we had, I will tell you what, I've never seen so many school supplies in my life. So next year, my goal is to have more, right? That's our goal. Together, we'll have more. Uh, but it, it just thrilled my heart to, uh, to see you guys bring it in and just think, oh, I'm just giving out school supplies. But when you're actually in the moment and you see kids, you don't even know, like, how, you know what I mean? Like, they don't have anything. And uh, and I just want to share this quick story with you. I promise I'll get in my message, but it's good. So, I go into Dollar General all the way. They're probably listening to me now. So if you are, guys, I love you. Anyway, um, down the street here, Dollar General, and I, I go in. There's a particular lady that always work, waits on me, you know, whatever. And uh, another guy in there named Skid. And anyway, we talk. And they're like, why are you buying all these chips? I'm like, I promise. I know it looks like I'm eating all of them, which I am. But no, they're for the youth group. Well, what youth group? What church are you from? So we start talking. So the other week I went in there, and I'm just minding my own business, you know, picking up some stuff. And this woman comes running down the aisle. She's like, hey, I got to tell you something. I said, what's that? She said, I've been watching you online. I said, you have? She said, oh, girl, yeah. She said, I was in here by myself working one day. I thought, I remember that girl coming down to look that church up. And she said, girl, I had that plan. Oh, I was stocking the shelves and had it cranked up. I told Skip, get in here. We got to listen to this girl. Why say all that? Say all that to say that's awesome. But um, you guys are awesome. So she was actually at National Night Out with her grandkids. And her daughter comes around the corner. And she's like, wait, is that the lady you've been telling me about? The one that's crazy? The one that's hyped up? That's hers? Like, yeah. She's like, oh, my goodness. So I said, come here. I said, what do you need? She, she felt it. She said, my grandkids, you know, I said, look, don't say no more. I'm like, come on. I told Holly and all of them, I said, come on. We got to get some. Hey, you want, you want some crayons? So we loaded them down, and uh, I saw her again the next day. She said, I just, the love, you know, that you gave my grandkids and my daughter, you know, uh, thank you for what you did. And that's why we do what we do. Um, and so I love being with all you guys and just watching you sit back and you know, and just watch everybody do their thing. It's awesome. So thank you guys for all that you do and uh, for coming out. Whatever I need, you guys are always, boom, you're there. And I uh, thank you so much for that. It's been a great summer. I'm praising God because we probably had, I know it's a little skippy today, but we've had a pretty decent summer attendance-wise all summer long. Um, and so I praise God for that. So thank you all for making the effort to be here. We're closing out a sermon series because, you know, summer's wrapping up. You know what I'm saying? Best summer ever. I've had a best summer ever, I think. I hope you've had one of your best summer ever. So we've been looking at different ways that we can have the best summer ever. And so how many of you, you better clap because I'm going to single you out. How many of you enjoyed the sermon series that we yeah. And so we're going to close it out today. First Kings <clears throat> chapter 19. And I can't get enough of this particular chapter and passage. I preached before on Elijah and how he was running. You know, and he went underneath that uh, tree, underneath that bush, and was like, God, I can't take it no more. And then he ran to the cave. Well, I'm going to pick up at the cave because I, I felt like the Lord was telling me this week, somebody's in the cave, David. You need to, somebody's been in the cave long enough. You, you need to hit it right there. So we're going verse uh, 9 and 10. I'm keeping it easy up on y'all. Are you ready? And he spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? I believe God's saying that to somebody that we, what are you still doing here? Why are you here? And he replied, I've been, through, I've been very jealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. Now I'm the only one left now they're trying to kill me. Well, guess what? I think I'd be in a cave too. So the title of my message today is, How Did I Get Here? How did I get here? Lord, today as we dive into your word, uh, God, we know that sometimes life is hard. 
Lord, there's great mountaintop experiences that you give us, and that's when everything is going really good in our life. But Lord, it's, there's other times where a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but there's times, Lord, where, where we uh, have our little pity parties and we kind of sit in our cave experiences. And Lord, I believe that you're trying to raise some people up. I believe you're trying to tell someone, look, I see you, I hear you, I know about you, but it's time. What I have for you is great, but you've got to speak it into existence and you've got to stop allowing other people to speak into you. Lord, I pray for the one that just seems isolated, the one that seems alone today, the one that has just had difficulty after difficulty after difficulty. Lord, I'm talking to that one today, whoever it may be. Father God, may you do what you need to do in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. I uh, wanted to just share a little thing. You know, I always try to you know, be creative. You, know, you don't come to church and just be like, Verse 9, you know, like I try to, you know, so if you get tired of hearing my stories, I don't, I don't know what to say. But anyway, so uh, I think you'll enjoy this one. Uh, has anybody ever been to LaGuardia? Uh, LaGuardia, I'm probably going to mispronounce it, but it's okay. Y'all know, you get the drift. Uh, ever been to that airport before? Anybody? Oh, yeah, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Um, so my son was like, hey, Mom, come in. He was in Texas. And I've uh, been to Texas this summer for a little while and training. And he said, hey, I'm coming in on Friday at 5 o'clock. So we're like, okay, no big deal. So we made like a little day thing about it. And we're like, okay, we got to be at the airport. We timed it out, we thought. Uh, so we get in the car. We're riding along. We put it in our phone. And I'm going to tell you what, it looked like a Christmas tree was going on. I mean, I saw these lights flashing, coming up, traffic, traffic, and all this stuff. I thought, what are we going to do? At that point, we pretty much were at New Jersey Turnpike. Can I, can I talk to you about the Turnpike? Because I'm going to tell you what, I've had so much anxiety when I get on the Turnpike. Can, can I just go a little further to say, you Jersey drivers are crazy. Man, I can't, I, I'm telling you, I, I mean, I have to love you because I'm a pastor, and that's what I do. I'm supposed to love everybody, but you Jersey people take it up a notch on me because your driving is crazy. Like, if you want to see if your marriage is going to last, if you want to see if you can hit through the good times and the bad times, take a trip to that particular airport on a Friday, flight comes in at 5 o'clock, and sitting in traffic for two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, bumper to bumper, on New Jersey Turnpike. I look to my left, it's brake lights, brake lights, brake lights, boom, stand still. Look to my right, same thing. Everywhere I looked, I thought, this is cute, this is interesting. But the Jersey drivers are so bad that it could be bumper to bumper. I never understood this. No offense, y'all. Bumper to bumper, and yet they still find a way to cut in front of you and then slam on the brakes. It's like, dude, like, really? Like, what's the point? You're not going anywhere. But it's so bad, and I've had so many bad experiences on the turnpike with someone's driving that I, I've gotten to the point where I'm, like, panic mode. And so instead of saying, Micah, I, and scaring him half to death, that's not gone over very well either, Um it, it, was, it was not a good experience when I do that because he's like, you scare me, why, why? And it just makes it 10 times worse. So what I'm learning to do is just be a gracious wife. And so I just put my hand out and touch the, um, the, the yeah, yeah, the dash. And that's all I do. It's like, in other words, saying brake lights ahead, you know, because I love my boy, but he, he's like, oh, yeah, look at that. And I'm like, no, 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 you know, I'm putting my hand out. So I'm starting to do it so much that my kids are getting annoyed by it because they're driving and I'm putting my hand out because it's, 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 it's got me so paranoid now because so many people there, they pull out and then they slam on brakes. And so we're in bumper to bumper. I'm doing the thing and he's, he's accepting it pretty good. Um, and did I mention that we're becoming hangry? And we're looking at the time and we're noticing that we're probably not going to make it to the airport by 5 o'clock. And my husband's like, look, don't worry. Like, by the time he gets, you know, he gets off the plane, he gets his baggage, you know, he's got to find, we got to find where he's even at, what terminal, the place is crazy. I'm like, okay, so we, we actually start to move a little bit, and then we get through, uh, we get through the George Washington Bridge, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, you're talking about New York City. I've seen it all now. 
I've been there so many times, but until you're stuck in traffic and actually can look around and experience, then we creeped up from there to Manhattan. Come on. And then they had people with fruit cups coming on out in the street, coming up to my car. And I'm like, this is tempting, but I got to keep going. I mean, people coming up, asking for money. It was nuts. So we get through there, and we finally get in Queens. And then all of a sudden, my husband said, watch it, watch it. I said, what? He said, he's going to text us. It won't even be 5 o'clock. He's going to say, hey, I'm here. Where you at? And did you bring food? Watch. 4.45. We're stressing. The time is now gone. Instead of getting there, you know, we're thinking we got plenty of time. Now it's 5.45 before we're able to get him according to our destination calculated. So he's 4.45. He's saying instead of 5.45, 4.45, he land. I just landed. Where you at? What would you get to eat? He had been on a connecting flight from Texas, has not ate, ate since early in the morning. He's wanting to know where we're going to eat. And we're sitting and bumping over traffic for about two and a half hours. We don't even know how we're going to get it. We don't even know if we have enough gas. And he's texting, okay? Yeah, it was great times. So we're getting a little closer. We're starting to move. We go through Queens. And if you've ever been there, it's absolutely insane. People are trying to pull up and pick people up. And I'm thinking, look, dude, I don't know where you at, but you better. So I texted him, and I said, look, you are not going to ask me what's to eat. In fact, while you're in the airport, you better find yourself a Shake Shack. I almost said something else. Anyway, Shake Shack, you better, oh, boy, I'm always worried every week. I'm like, oh, God. I don't see, you know what I'm saying? Y'all be like, Pastor D? No, but anyway, I was like, you better find yourself something and bring, me, bring us something to eat. So you're talking about service. We pulled up. I called him. I said, word three. He said, 10 Ford, good buddy. He comes around the corner, has the bag of Shake Shack. Come on, burgers, fries. I said, bring it on. I said, all I have to say, it was hell going through it. And while I was sitting there wondering if I'm ever going to get there in time and wondering, man, what have I done to get here? I said, you know, how did I get here? He got in the car. I didn't say, how you doing? I took the cheeseburger from him. I said, I don't know who booked this ticket and this flight, but I'm all happy. He said, mom, it wasn't me. It was the people from West Point. I said, well, I'd like to give them a call and tell them what I think about driving all in here on a Friday at five o'clock. Y'all could, went right by the Newark airport, but no, y'all couldn't fly there. You had to go all the way to Queens. Had to take me from one side to the next side. But I'm going to tell you, it was all good because we had Shake Shack and Crumble Cookie. Anybody ever been to Crumble Cookie? Oh, all our trips now. I'm going to get my sermon in a minute. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but all my trips now are planned around. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's bad. You can tell the guys. Okay, I'm going to get back on track. Fall's coming. Fall's coming. But anyway, what I'm saying is the crumble cookies are the bomb. If you've not been there, tell them I sent you. Maybe I'll get a discount. They can send me a little flyer in the mail, and I could be, like, on their little advertisement. It would be awesome. But um, they have different flavors of the month. Their homemade cookies are delicious. So we were good on the way back with burgers, fries, and cookies. It was a great time, but I couldn't fit in my pants this morning, but it's okay. I'm here. But I say all that to say that in that, in that particular moment, I thought, how did I get here? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, how did I get sitting in traffic? How did I get, and, and maybe that's where you're at today. You're finding yourself in a situation where you're like, how did I even get here? Like, how, how did I even get to this particular place in my life? No matter what it was, maybe it was a, a particular situation or a, a, a relationship issue, or maybe, maybe it was something tragic that happened in your life, but you're just finding yourself caught up in the hang-ups, if you will, and you feel like it's a holding pattern, and you've been in a particular place for a long time, and, and you feel like, when is God ever going to come through? I don't understand why this is going on, and you feel like you're stuck in a cave. I just want to say that caves can represent anything that we're going through. Come on. I mean, it, it, some of you, your cave right now is anxiety. You're like, Pastor D, like, I'm, my girl, I'm stressed. Like, you know, maybe that's, but today I want you to know that we're going to expose some caves if you're okay, whatever you're dealing with. And if you're not in a cave now, then you better pat yourself on the back, eat another crumble cookie because it's coming. It's coming. And you're going to find yourself in a situation where, like, you feel isolated or you feel alone or you feel like, what, what is going on here? Why, I never, why, how did I get here? How did I get to this point in my life? And I, I love this story about Elijah because, you know, Elijah was, wasn't just an ordinary perfect, uh, person that just came to church or followed God every once in a while. Like, he was a man of God. Like, he was a prophet. He was strong, courageous in battles. I mean, my boy tore it up. 450 people slayed, like, by himself. Like, he, he, was, he was awesome. 
and uh, he, was, he was doing the ministry for God, but yet he was getting to a place where he, he felt like he wasn't being effective, and he felt like he was frustrated, and that's where some of you are at right now. You're frustrated. You're in a holding pattern. Come on. You're stuck in a cave. You feel like, you know what, I've been here for a while, and I'm sick and tired of it. I've tried this, and I've tried that. Come on, am I getting there yet? You feel like you want to quit, like you just, well, for Elijah, the cave represented him quitting. Like he was, he was done. Have you ever found yourself there like, I can't take this anymore? You want to throw in the towel and say, I quit. I quit. I quit. It's like me when I go to the gym and I have to do sleds. I have to do sleds. Y'all know what that is? Okay, it's just like it sounds. So you take a sled and you have to push it. It's really, really heavy, by the way. You can put all kinds of weights on it. And you got to push it as fast as you can all the way down to the side of the room and all the way back. Okay? All right. Well, I can do, you know, no problem. I know it's coming. No big deal. But on a particular day of the week, if a particular person is working, I'm not going to call that person out. But I know that we're not just going to do one sled run. We're probably going to do three or four. In fact, it was so bad the other day, I said, I can't do this. And that person looked at me and said, oh, well, yes, you can. You've already done, you've done it before. What do you mean you can't do it? I want to tell somebody that it feels like quick quitting, you can do it. If you look back, you've already done it. You've gotten this far. You can do it. But it's about pushing through the difficult times. It's pushing through. And a lot of times, you know, you know, your husband can't do it for you. Come on. Your parents can't tell you. Oh, come on. You got that. You can, anybody, no, and nobody can tell you nothing. You've got to do it yourself. And you've got to learn to fight yourself. And everybody else around you will be succeeding sometimes. But you've got to learn you're your own cheerleader. If you don't cheer for yourself, my God, I guess you are going to be in a cave. And some of you, that's where you're at. And Elijah was right there. He was like, dude, like, I, I've been doing everything for you, God, and now I'm stuck. If you remember the story, I've shared it before. I'll go back if you weren't there that Sunday. And I talked about how he was running. He was running from Jezebel. Remember that? He was running. She was mad because my boy's like Superman. Like, he's, he's running through. He's doing all these things, and she's mad. She's chasing after him, trying to kill him. And, and he, is, he is under the bush at one particular tree, bush, whatever, y'all. And he's laying there, and he's like, I can't take this anymore. I want to die. Remember, then he runs in the cave, and here he is, and he's like, I can't do this anymore. He throws in a towel. He's frustrated. You know, he, he forgets about everything that God has done for him, and he's sitting there having a little pity party for himself. Come on. I believe that God's okay with a pity party for a little while. I believe that he probably sat back, watched Elijah go in there, and said, all right, I'll give you 24 hours. Go in there and cry like a baby. Do what you need to do. But after that, you better come out like a soldier. Come on. You better get back in there running. Somebody needs to know that. The enemy's trying to shut you down and wear you out. And he'll do everything he can to do that. And he'll keep you in that cave forever. And he'll try to whisper things to you. Come on. And keep you stuck right there. But I want you to know that God loves you. <laughs> and even in your cave, you can't outrun God. He's right there with you in the middle of everything you're going. And so if you don't like where you're at, if you're getting to the point where you're frustrated and you don't, guess who can change it? You can. You don't like it? Change it. Change it. And so you got to do something about it. That's why it's so important what you say and what comes out of your mouth. And a lot of times we don't like where we're at. Well, I wonder what we've been saying. What, what have we been saying? If everything that comes out of your mouth is, I'll never do this, why did it have to come on? Why this and why that? Man, I've been there, done it too. I ain't no perfect person, y'all. You know, why is this happening? Why is this, you know, I just don't understand. And all we're doing is complaining about, guess what? Nothing's going to work out. But we got to push our way through. You're the one that holds the key to your cave. And it's okay to go in it. And I believe sometimes God calls us in a cave so he can have a conversation with us. Because we're too busy. We're too busy to even worry about God until a bill comes in that we can't pay for. Or a loved one's sick in the hospital. Or our kids are in desperate need. They're hurt. They can't fit in with a particular group. They're crying at home, don't want to go to school. Then, come on, then we want to call, call out on God. 
So I believe sometimes he's like, look, I want the emotions to get somewhere because I need to talk to you. And I can't talk to you and have a conversation with you until I make you feel isolated, until I get you to a place where you're in the dark, where it feels like you don't know if anything's going to happen in your life so I can be able to have a conversation with you. So I don't know what, what your cave looks like today, but, man, God wants to have a conversation with you. But he doesn't want you to sit there and pack your bags up and stay there for the rest of your life. And I'm not saying that what you, I don't know, y'all go through things. I don't even know what some of you are going through. And I don't have to know because God knows. It's only my job to encourage you. So please don't take this wrong when I say, oh, you got to get up, you got to go. And I don't know, I don't know your situation. And some of you have been through things. I, I don't even know how I would have ever dealt with it. But at the same time, I know who God is. I do know that. Everybody has different situations, but not everybody has the same one, right? So, But it's learning and understanding that we can only stay there long enough. It's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. It's okay. But there has to come a time where we say, hey, God, like I've got got to work my way out of this mess. Because, see, a lot of times we let the cave stop us where God wants to take you, which is the next point. Man, I'm flowing that good. It's like peanut butter and jelly. You know what I'm saying? Number one, don't let the cave stop you from where God wants to take you. And that's what Andrew does. So he throws up a cave, right? He says, you know what? I'm going to throw a little depression and and make you feel sad and make you feel blue so you can go in that cave. But I'm going to tell you something. Those caves, you can come in, you can come out all you want. Come on. Because in those moments, that's going to strengthen you. In those cave moments, Come on, some of you, that's the only time you're really going to be desperate for God. That's the only time where you really, it's a shame, but you should be desperate for him every single day. But let's just keep it real. We in church, can we keep it real? We're not always like that. But when we get in the cave, instead of picking up the phone and talking about it, come on, somebody, it's being real with God and saying, God, I just need about 10 more minutes. I just need about one more day. I'm not ready yet, God. But, God, I believe with your strength and with your help, I can get up, and I know there's something better, but I'm still mourning in what was. But I, Oh, God wants to tell you something. He wants you to know that he loves you, but it's time. It's time. Look at your neighbor say, it's time. And so God shows up, and Elijah, he's like, huh, what are you doing here? Hello? What are you doing here? I mean, he, God has a funny way of asking us questions, doesn't he? He already knows the answer. But he wants to get it out. Of, he wants to remind us. So his way of reminding Elijah what he has done for him and all that he's accomplished is to ask why, why are you still here? Why, why are you here? And he's like, look, I'm tired. I'm tired of doing everything your way, God. I've done everything for you and anything you wanted me to do, but it ain't working, and I'm tired. And if I want to throw in the towel, come on, then I'm going to throw in the towel. And I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm quitting. I quit. And in that moment, I started thinking about, Going back and looking at the other chapters before us, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, wow, Elijah's in the ministry. Elijah, he knows what God can do. I mean, he's defeated people. I mean, my goodness. You remember, I think it was chapter 18. Well, you don't remember. I'm refreshing memory. But I know 17, 18, something like that. But anyway, so in one of those chapters, he, he, would, he didn't know how he was going to get fed. Remember, God sent the raven. The bird, not the raven, y'all, is coming in the fall. It's, it's football's coming, but I'm talking about the bird, the raven, you know what I'm saying? Ravens are terrible anyway, by the way. But anyway, so, so the, it comes, and, it, and, uh, and he provides food, and he provides water, and, like, he does so many things. But in that moment, his way of reminding God or reminding Elijah was like, hey, like, why, why are you here? But I also believe that it was a moment where Elijah was able to just be real with God. Like, sometimes he asks us questions just so we can, like, open up. Like, it's not a punishment. Like, he already knows why you're there. But sometimes there's something about just getting it out. Come on, because we like to hold on because, you know, we can't tell anybody, you know, because, you know, they might think we're, like, down here, you know. 
Um, but I'm learning that you just open up. You just need to open up, be real. Like, you know, it's okay. Like, that's why I tell you all my, diff- hey, all my laundry's going out right here on Sunday morning. I got people online, you know. But, hey, it's just, it's a matter, there's power, I believe, in that. Keeping it real. And understand that we all go through things. And, and Elijah was just, like, trying to be real with God. And I believe sometimes he allows us in that moment for, to go through things so that we can just be real to see, are we really going to tell him he knows what you're feeling? But just being open and honest, like, God, like, this is why I'm here. I'm tired of doing what you want me to do. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. Come on. Some of you, that's, that's where you're at right now. And, and so in that moment, he was trying to explain to him why he was tired and what was happening. And then he tells God, he said, and then I got this woman. Because how many of you know these women? I got this woman. All right, Eddie, come on out. Crystal, you can put him on the couch later tonight. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, you know, in that moment, he's like, I got this woman. You know, she's talking all the smack. Jezebel is after me. I'm running for my life. And look, Jezebel didn't even touch him, didn't even put a finger on him. But you know what Jezebel did? She ran to her murph. She talking smack. And because of her talking smack, that's why he's in the cave. Because it's playing tricks with his mind. See, that's why you got to be careful. Because there's a lot of Jezebels trying to talk to you right now in your moment of isolation and your moment of depression and they feeding right in, tripping you up with all these doubts. Oh, well, you know, I know you're praying for this. I know you're waiting for this. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we go right in our cave. And we're depressed. And we're like, well, I saw God do it for sister so-and-so two weeks ago. How come he's not doing it for me yet? I don't see him doing anything. I thought he was a God that would bless me. I thought he's a God that wants to prosper me. Then how come this isn't open up? Doesn't he see what I'm going through? Come on, and we're letting Jezebels in our life run us into caves. Maybe today you need to do some house cleaning because there's a lot of Jezebels around you. And you don't understand. Oh, come on. Man, this makes me want to preach and want to take off my shoes and just get out. Hey, because there are some people in your life, and I might fall, but there are some people in your life, and they're keeping you in the cave. I'm going to tell you what, I don't know. And, and you know, sometimes it's the ones that we're the closest to. And sometimes they're relatives. And sometimes they're people you work with. And sometimes they're your beautiful day in the neighborhood. Some days there's your neighbors, right? It's different people. And what the enemy does is... Basically, and that's who Jezebel is. It's, it's the basically the enemy himself setting you up. And y'all are falling for it and living in a cave. And they're walking around. You know what I've learned is a lot of times the Jezebels, the reason why they're talking smack to you and they want you to stay in the cave is because they see the power that you have. They see you succeeding in your life, and they can't take it. So what they do is they want to talk, and some of you are like, but I'm just, they're talking about me. Well, you know, I learned if people are talking about you, then you're doing something right. And there's something I learned in my occupation, in my husband's occupation in particular, people don't talk trash all they want to talk. You know why? Because haters be haters. And if you're doing something good and you're following God the way you want to do it, people always talking. You've got to learn to let that mess go. You've got to learn to put your foot down and say, I don't care what y'all are talking about. I don't care what y'all be posting. I don't care what y'all be texting because you know what? I'm following him because he's been good to me. And I can only stay in the cave and listen to your mess long enough. Stop being a doormat for people. Stop it. Stop allowing them to walk all up all over you. It's time to clean house. Come on, church. It's time to stop being in a cave because of what someone thinks about you, what someone wants to say about you. Man, who cares? People say to me, hey, you see, you know, no. You know what I look at? If a person is happy, let them be happy. Who are we to judge the timetable of when they did this or how they did that? Man, I just want people to be happy. If people are following God and they want to be happy, then so be it. If they want to live there, let them live there. They want to date that person, let them date that person. My God, let people be happy, right? Yeah, 
But we have Jezebels. Yeah, and may, maybe it's not maybe it's not the other people who's being the Jezebel. Maybe maybe you're like Pastor B, I might be the Jezebel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's just identifying that. So stop letting the people in your life disqualify you. And we're taking all this um, criticism, constructive criticism from people they ain't never constructed anything. And the more powerful we become through God, not ourselves, the more anointed we are, people aren't going to like us. People aren't going to want to be in the same room with us because they're miserable. And they've been in a cave. Man, it's 1130. Y'all ready to move on? Or you want to stay there a little longer? I mean, I'm just saying. I just want you to be aware because I think sometimes we get so caught up in our emotions That's what's keeping us in the cave, but we also have to understand that Jezebel is like the enemy, right? The enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't want you to live a good life. He doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to remarry. Come on. He doesn't want your marriage to be successful. Come on. He doesn't want your children, right, to to have a good relationship with their parents. He doesn't want that. He wants there to be rebellion. He wants to, come on. He doesn't, come on. It's, it's. I mean, that's what he wants, and many of us are falling for it. We're falling for it, and on our kids, we pray for our kids, right? We pray, oh, God, just protect them, and whenever they get in trouble or they're not going the way they want, hey, I've learned, just pray. Don't talk about who's doing what. Just pray for them. Love them where they're at. There's too many people judging other people, and, and what does the Bible say about that? And say, it says you got to love your neighbor as yourself. you got to be there for people. And love them where they are. Stop sticking your nose up. Come on and be in the Jezebel of somebody. And love people the way that God loves all of us. Amen? All right, it's probably time to move on now. Um, And the last thing, as I wrap this up today, number three, you have to remove the doubt to get out. This is what I mean by this. Elijah was sitting in the cave. And he was throwing in the towel. You know why? Because he was doubting God. But isn't it funny how he was doubting God when God had done so many miracles in his life. The ones I was just talking about, you know, the raven, all these different things. God provided and did for him in times of need where he needed the most. Like he always came through. And I want you to remember that today. Whatever doubt that the enemy is feeding you, like do you not remember how you got through that? How you got through that? Well, that wasn't because you're great, because you're strong. That was because the power of the Lord that's getting you up every day to keep moving in life when you don't even feel like it. Hey, it's, it's understanding the blessings. It's understanding his faithfulness from generations to generation. He's been good to all of us. So why are we getting tripped up on, on the hang-ups and the situation we're going through now? And God is good and he wants you to succeed. And he doesn't, he's saying, look, it's okay. Like when you're ready, but just don't be there all like for long. Like it, you got to keep moving. And so my goal for you today is not only to think about the caves in your life, but to say, you know what? i got to stop doubting God, and I've got to get up, and I've got to learn that it's time, that it's time to walk out of this cave right now. I don't know what your cave is like. And, uh, maybe you've learned a lot. We can learn a lot in caves. I feel like if we use it the way we should use it, like we can learn a lot. We can cry out, and it, it releases a burden inside of us because some of you don't have anybody to talk to. But you can talk to God, and, and, and it's okay to get mad at him. I just want to say that. Like, I believe that. It, it's okay to say, God, I'm frustrated with you. Like, God, I, I, this is how I'm feeling. Like, he wants us to be real with him so that he can show you how much he loves you and do things and send people in your life along your path so that you're able to get up out of the cave even when you didn't think you could. So whatever doubt is keeping you down today, it's up to you. Ain't your husband can tell you to get up? Don't you love my English? Ain't your sister? Ain't your brother gonna tell you you're good and all you can go on? It's you. It's you. And some of you, that's the problem. You're standing in the way. Your own self. Your own blessings. You're standing in the way. So I just want you to know today, man, God is awesome, isn't he? I believe that he wants to turn it around. It's okay that you've been hurting. It's okay. Like, it's, God's like, I understand. I've been good. He sends people in your life to help. He 
those who love you, which you move them to. So you got to therefore understand which ones are the Jezebels because they, they can disguise themselves. Sometimes they're the ones that praise you the most. So you have to understand which ones are really for me, not against me. And you have to make up your mind, you know what? I'm going to push when it gets hard. I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the best mom I can be. I'm, I'm going to be the best dad I can be. It's been difficult, but I am going to get through this. We are going to walk out of this cave because we've been here long enough. Will you stand with me this morning? Every head bowed, every eye closed. The altars are always full, too. I'm, I'm up here. Hug me. Spit on me. Whatever. Just If you need me, I'm up here. Um, if you want prayer, come on up. I mean, I... You, if you need anything, just come up, y'all. I'm right here. I'm right here right now, right this very moment. Some of you might be going through a difficult situation. You've been in the cave a while. If you want to come up, you need prayer this morning, I'm right here. I'd be glad to pray with you. If not, every head bowed, every eye closed. How many of you would raise your hand and say, um, Pastor Dana, I need prayer today. Anybody? Yep. Just raise your hand. Yep. Yep, yep. So, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to all pray together. We're going to pray together right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call on your name right now because we know, Lord, when we can't do it and we've had enough, Lord, then you can step in and do what you need to do. So today, Lord, the one that's been laying there long enough, the one, Lord, who's been listening to the Jezebels, God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would give them the strength that they need to rise above the storm, Lord, to rise above the pain, to rise above the hurt. Lord, whatever it looks like for them, God, whatever cave they've been in long enough, today's the day, Lord, we're making a public declaration of our faith to say we will not let the enemy keep us there anymore, God. We are more than conquerors through you, God. So, Lord, do what you need to do, God. Touch us, Lord, in our thinking, God. May we think on things that are good, things that are from you, not against you, God, because you are a God that wants to turn it around. Whatever looks impossible in our life, God, give us the strength we need, Lord. When we're praying for loved ones that seem to be running as far as they can run, God, help us to be able to praise you and trust you in the middle of it, God, because you've been so good to us, Lord. Lord, we love you today, and we want to get up. Lord, we want to be used by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 